hello today we are going to talk about SAP NetWeaver portal we'll take a look at what is an enterprise portal why do we need it its architecture how do you create roles users how do you navigate the portal and then we will also have a look at a real SAP portal and try to see some of the functionalities that it offers. So what exactly is an enterprise portal? The answer to this question has changed dramatically in the past 10 to 15 years. Today, the focus of an enterprise portal has expanded and enterprise portals need to be able to carry out new tasks. For example, the portal should be able to optimize business processes that include various application environments, numerous data sources and even different companies. Companies want to provide the portal to their employees as an efficient central access point for information and services which the employees require to fulfill their tasks. Essentially, an enterprise portal must provide a central entry point for access to applications, content and services using a web browser or another interface, a personalized role-based user interface that can be changed according to individual requirements, a simple maintenance that is based on an open and flexible system without additional client software, and secure access from any location. Why a portal? End users often have to combine applications into interconnected business prospects and processes. This means that users find information and must respond to it. For example, information about a lost outbound delivery is needed to be provided to an individual customer regardless of where in the IT landscape this information is stored and in which system or business process this response must take place. Normally, various user interfaces are required to execute the application systems involved in this process. Often, this arrangement results in lost opportunities for improved customer service, results in procedural inefficiencies, and lower employee productivity. An enterprise portal can provide a connection between the applications and the information required to perform a particular task. At a glance, the end user receives a complete view of the company and its processes by using the portal. These are based on numerous data sources and are integrated in several operative application systems. So here's a quick look at some of the core functions of the portal. Starting with the portal infrastructure. The portal infrastructure provides the basic functions of SAP NetWeaver portal and ensures browser-based access to different information and systems. It unifies applications, information and processes from both SAP and non-SAP sources and is currently available in more than 30 languages. Then you have knowledge management and one of the things it offers is the business packages. Business packages contain predefined portal content, for example, transaction and report calls in various backend systems, WebDIN Pro based applications, and applications written in Java. The aim of this predefined content, which can also be created by third party providers, is to facilitate a faster implementation phase and also enable content managers to integrate new applications into an existing SAP NetWeaver portal quickly. Business packages are aimed at certain target groups and all their business tasks. This is also reflected in the business package classification whereby the business packages are divided into the following target groups, end user, specialists and managers. Business packages offer you one of the most comprehensive business content libraries available, which is a result of over 35 years of development experience at SAP. Then you have the concept of federation. 
Decentralized companies with several portal installations can use various scenarios to exchange content between portals or create a central enterprise portal with content from the various decentralized portals. Since industry standards are used here, you can also integrate the content of other third-party portals into the SAP NetWeaver portal. Portal Development Kit Any aspect of SAP NetWeaver portal can be modified to meet the requirements of your company or your implementation. In addition to the portal's many configuration options, you can also enhance SAP NetWeaver portal with your own custom developments. SAP offers two portal development kits or PDKs. Using the SAP NetWeaver Developer Studio, you can write your own Java-based portal application and you can also use the PDK for .NET applications uh, that running on a Microsoft.NET environment and these can be easily integrated into the SAP NetWeaver portal. So that was a quick background into portals uh, and what functionality they offer, why do they exist. Now we will log into a real SAP portal. So typically three steps involved. You open the browser, you enter a specific URL. This URL looks something like this here. Typically this would be provided to you by your uh, basis or NetWeaver consultant and then you get the login page where you enter. So now let's log into the real portal and see how it works. So I open my internet browser and I enter my URL. So this is my server name domain, the port number, and IRJ, which is the standard extension for a portal. Click enter, and I get the logon screen. I enter my user ID and password, and this is what the portal looks like. You have different screen elements here. So you have the header area, the navigation panel, the content area which currently is blank but we'll soon see some content here. And you have uh, the tiles area here. which gives you history, backward, forward and the personalization options. The header area is located in the upper part of the browser window. This area does not change when you navigate from one page to another. The header area contains the masthead, the tool area and the, to the top level navigation. The navigation panel is located at the left of the browser window. You can collapse the navigation panel by using the arrow icon in order to save space within the window. So there it's gone and now I can bring it back. You can also expand or resize it to access tools and folders. The portal favorite eye view provides an opportunity for a user to make lists of links to enable direct access to items in the portal such as portal pages, full page eye views or links to external websites. In this way the favorites can be organized in a folder structure. Contrary to browser favorites, portal favorites are unattached to the client and available on every machine after logging on to the portal. This is the content area, so if we click a tab here, so I can see different sets of contents, uh, sales vol values, document quick access, document overview, etc. The content area is filled with data you retrieve from information sources in your company and from the internet and this data is retrieved and contained by something called an eye view which are small applications. So this is one eye view, this is the other eye view and this is the third eye view in this content area now. 
iViews can access document files, emails, websites and data in other corporate applications. Another navigation function is provided by the Object Based Navigation or OBN. This option allows the user to navigate on the basis of business objects from the backend system. Business objects which provide an object oriented navigation are characterized by a small triangle on the data record. A context menu allows you to call the operations implemented in iView in a business object. So let's look at another tab, Business Unit Analysis. And here we find uh, several tasks. And if I click on this symbol here, I have the option to either forward it or resubmit it. The context menu is set subject to the authorizations in the portal. This means that two different users can use the same eye view but will see different context menus within it. Let's have a quick look at personalization now. The portal offers multiple options to personalize the eye view and the layout as per a user preference. So if you go back to the supplier view, we find this tab which we briefly spoke about earlier. And if I open it, I get the option to personalize. So on this tab, currently I find I've got three eye views, the document overview, the document quick access and the sales value. And on this side, I see there's a fourth one, which is a universal work list, but which is not currently visible. So I can select a specific eye view or, and remove it, or I can restore the eye views to as they originally were. So let's just close this and go back. So as you saw, the document overview, document quick access sales values are the three i views currently so let me see if i can take out the sales value i view i click on the options and i can directly say remove from page i get a message uh, and i say yes and you can see that i view is gone so now when we go back to my options personalize we see that the sales view is grayed out now and only two eye views are visible in the content area. Another thing I can do is I can change the layout of the portal, the display of it. So I go to system admin portal display and let's say I select the high contrast option this will just get populated in a minute to show me what my portal may look like with the specific theme. So this is what it looks like. I can make some changes and I can save my new theme. If I change my theme very often, uh, instead of having to navigate to it, I can simply add it to my portal favorites. So now when you go back to Portal Favorite, I see the theme editor is right here. Let's now have a quick look at the Portal Content Management functionality and see if we can create a new eye view with it. So I go to the Content Administrator link And this is my portal content that already exists. Let's look at the fo folder SAP EP training. And this is where I will try to create a new eye view. So I highlight the folder and right click in Windows. So, uh, and then I get the option to create a new eye view. I can also create a new page, role, etc. So let's try to create a new eye view. The system asks me which technology I want to use to create an eye view. 
I have multiple options here. I'll be using the iView template option, the first one. The SAP NetWeaver portal provides a number of iView wizards, each one adapted to the type of iViews that you are creating. The wizards provide step-by-step -step instructions, making sure that you provide all of the crucial pieces of information required to generate the iView. A developer can also add new wizards to your portal by creating suitable new PAR files. iView wizards enable you to create new iViews based on existing view templates that were delivered by SAP or provided after the installation. In the Portal Content Studio, you need to right click the folder in which you want to create the iView and choose the template that you require from the template list as we have done. So now we go to the second step and this is where we will need to select the template. Since we are trying to create a simple URL view, we will select the URL iView template, click next and this is where we need to give it a name. So I can enter pretty much any name. And the ID and the ID prefix language and description would be test URL and now I enter the URL let me try yahoo.com has to be preceded by an HTTP or HTTPS So finish. And I see test 27 is available to me now. Let's see what happens when I click it. So nothing happens when I click it, but I need to right click it. And then it says open the object and here's where I see the object that I've created. To actually go to the URL, I need to say preview. So this will display the object as it would appear at runtime for the end user. So I click preview and there's another browser window opening up here you can see, which is Yahoo. which is essentially the link I provided. So this is how you see we have created a simple URL iView. Another important concept in the portal is user administration. So let's have a quick look at that. We'll try to modify an existing user and create a new one, assign some roles, and then we'll have a quick look at a few slides and find out the architecture behind user management. So this is my identity management screen. I'm currently user 27. So let me go and see what details I find. This is user 27. Try to modify this. So currently you can see it says test user first name, last name. So if I just change this to 27, save. And now when I refresh the screen using F5, this should change to test 27, user 27, which it has. So that's how easy it is to modify an existing user. 
uh, let me go and try to create a brand new user so let me see if this exists no it doesn't so all I need to do is to create the user I scroll down put in the mandatory fields the fields marked with the asterisks are mandatory so let's see if I try to save this without filling in the password I should get an error message which I do instead of selecting a password I will simply disable this and hit save user successfully created so now we've created a brand new user however this user does not have any roles assigned to it so if I scroll down to the navigation menu assigned roles I should see a blank which I do I want to change this and I want to assign it one of the standard roles so this is my standard role I highlight this and press add so that's my role added I save this and then when I go back to the assigned roles uh, I'm already here I see that my new role has now been assigned to this brand new user so this is how users are created and managed in the portal however user management is a slightly more complex task uh, typically in a project uh, more complex than what we've just seen this is just simple user creation and role assignment so this is the high level architecture for portal user management the AS Java application server Java provides an open architecture that is based on service providers to store user data and group data the application server Java which is represented by this J2EE engine here is delivered with the following service providers which are called user stores so you have the DBMS provider this indicates storage in the system database you have the UDDI provider this is storage via external service providers universal description discovery and integration is what UDDI stands for and finally you have the user management engine provider this is connection of the integrated user management engine which is defined by SAP this is installed as a user storage during the installation of the portal the application server Java and this normally is the correct option for most SAP customers the user concept and the authorization concept can only be installed and operated flexibly on the basis of the UME storage data. The user management engine has a user interface called identity management to manage users, groups and roles. And this is the interface we used when we created our brand new users. So user admin identity management here. The UME also supports various data sources. These are the system database, which is the Java database, the LDAP directory service, and the ABAP based SAP system. So my user, user 27, is an ABAP based user. So if I go to the SAP GUI, I can log in with my user ID and the same password that are used to log on to the portal so hopefully this gives you a good overview of what SAP NetWeaver portal is all about thank you for your time